this afternoon. We're going to give everybody a few minutes to dial in and, and log into the uh, GoToWebinar. Uh, in the meantime, there's a couple of house cleaning rules. Um, if you notice when you're logging in, everyone has actually been muted. So we're going to go ahead and use chat in order to communicate during the presentation. We will, however, be taking questions after the presentation. Um, and we can all talk about the uh, results of the presentation as well at the end. And let's just give everybody a few more minutes here and we can go ahead and begin our presentation. Um, and I did say good morning, good afternoon, depending on which part of the country everybody is at. We're very excited about presenting our solutions to you today. And I'm sure after the presentation you will be just as excited as we are. Um, the seamless integration that the three solutions are providing within Sage 100 is immense, very powerful, very robust, and it can help many businesses not only save time, but save resources and save, of course, money and uh, increase your bottom line. Okay, well. Let's go ahead and begin. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Patty Benitez. I'm with American Payment Solutions. Our webinar today, as you can see on the screen, is titled Helping the Big Guy Deliver the Holidays to You with ScanForce. We have Steve Showalter from ScanForce and B Technologies as well as American Payment Solutions. A brief introduction regarding each one of the participants today, ScanForce assists small to medium-sized businesses to implement scalable, easy-to-use, and powerful barcoding solutions for inventory management and process automation. ScanForce provides a full suite of warehouse management solutions as well as mobile sales solutions for field representatives. It is a SAGE certified solution that's designed exclusively for Sage 100, written and formatted, of course, for Sage 100, and runs on the latest handheld and tablet devices with Windows, Apple iOS, and Android. Starship is a product of B Technologies. B Technologies is a Sage Gold development partner specializing in integrated shipping solutions since 1989. That's 15 years plus of, of extensive knowledge with the full spectrum of Sage products. This, in addition to established relationships with carriers and other related applications, inventory management and EDI are just some examples of the additional applications, providing a mature solution that can definitely grow with you and your business. American Payment Solutions, with our connections to many different industries, we have become the endorsed merchant solutions provider for many restaurants, hospitality, and software companies throughout the United States and Canada. American Payment Solutions is a full-service merchant service provider, which is fully integrated to Sage 100. We serve thousands of small, medium, and large organizations. So Go ahead and begin. Once again, you all receive the invitation that we're offering to help you or help the big guy deliver the holidays to you and your customers with, once again, American Payment Solutions, ScanForce, and V Technologies. With that, I would like to hand it over to Steve Showalter, who's going to begin the presentation and explain the process within Sage. All right. Thanks, Patty. Um, I'm sharing my screen now, and what you guys are looking at on my end here is an emulation of a scanner. Um, ScanForce, as Patty mentioned, we have barcode solutions, and our solutions encompass the receiving uh, inventory transactions like counts and transfers, and then also the shipping. Now, the focus of today is really on the shipping side of things, getting the products out of your system in an accurate and efficient way so that you can complete that shipping and payment process. But I'm going to give you guys a quick little background on ScanForce and show you a couple of the other transactions that kind of bring home the whole inventory control side of ScanForce. Now, if I were to go through all the setup options and, and enhancements that ScanForce has, it would take us a few hours. So I'm going to kind of keep this brief. And one thing that all three of us do is we work closely 
uh, with anyone that's looking at our software, do more of a one-on-one -on -one presentation for you guys. So if anybody is interested in that, please contact us after this and we can go ahead and dive a little deeper into this. Now, to hit on a couple of things here, <clears throat> excuse me, ScanForce runs on pretty much any device these days, iOS, Android, Windows devices. You're looking at a rugged Android device right now, but again, there's a lot of flexibility with the actual hardware or scanners. Now, we're going to hit on the software side of this, but anybody that's looking at our software, we also take time to go through and make sure that the appropriate uh, scanner is presented to you as well for budget and environment as well. Now, when you launch our program, this is the main screen that users would see. You need to log in. Now, we don't take up additional Sage licenses. This login simply allows us to control who's allowed to do what and track who did what within the software. Now, ScanForce is real time in the sense of grabbing data from Sage. It grabs that data from your Sage system in terms of validation against sales orders and even on the receiving side for purchase orders. The actual updating of data though can be controlled in terms of how real time you want ScanForce to be. We have auto posting features that allow you to import data in and have that transaction automatically update back in your Sage system. ScanForce also functions in and out of wireless connectivity. So throughout this as I'm showing you transactions I'll mention where it connects up to wireless. So let's get into showing you this. The three components, as I mentioned, is receiving, inventory, and then shipping. I'm going to start off just showing you very quickly how we can do a receipt of goods. We're going to assume a purchase order is in the system, and now we're going to log in. The main menu has inventory transactions, utilities, order processing, and ScanForce even automates manufacturing processes, such as bill of materials, production entry, job cost, and also the uh, work order module now we have automation for. To do the receipt of goods, though, I'm going to tap on the order processing. I'm going to launch PO receiving and the device asks me for the PO number. Now some of our customers are having some luck having their vendors barcode the packing list with their PO number. That allows you to easily and quickly scan that barcode. You also have the option to key it in or even do a lookup where the device will connect up wirelessly to Sage and grab all the information as far as available purchase orders in your Sage system. Now you can type in that search box, the vendor name or the PO number. You can also use your finger and scroll on the screen and find a purchase order that way. If you find your PO, you can highlight it, hit accept and pull it onto your device. But the quickest way is to scan a barcode. So a lot of our customers will print off their own purchase orders and using crystal forms and the Azalea fonts that come with your Sage system, they'll print that off with barcodes on it already. That allows you to quickly and easily shoot a barcode off of your PO it's going to connect up wirelessly and instantly connect up grabbing real-time data from Sage and locking that PO. That way nobody can modify it back in Sage while you're in the process of doing the receiving. The device now at this point is going to uh, prompt me for items and it's going to instantly validate that the item I'm indicating is in fact an item on that PO. And that will occur whether you're connected to the network or not. So if I were to key in a random item number here, it's going to validate that for me telling me this is not on the PO. Now whether I'm connected or not, I also have a look up here that's going to show me the items that are on this particular PO. Now any of you with kids might recognize some of these items here. Uh, what we've done is we've tried to make this more around the holidays and items that might need to be shipped out to help, as Patty mentioned, the big guy get his items out for uh, um, Christmas Eve here. So this is just showing though the items that are on this purchase order and as you receive them in, they drop off of this lookup. So that's one way to indicate what you're receiving. Another way is to obviously scan barcodes. Now, if your items come in with barcodes on them, if that number in that barcode doesn't match your item number, ScanForce also recognizes the alias field that's set up back in Sage. And that can be done ahead of time or even from the device in the process of doing the receiving. If you don't have any barcodes to scan for items, most people will not only barcode that PO number, but they'll also barcode the item numbers so that you easily have something to scan. Validates that. It's going to, whoops, it did a double enter for me. It forces you to actually key in a quantity. That did a double enter for me really quickly there. I hit the button twice, um, and therefore it forces me to enter in this quantity. Now, after you indicate that item, what it's doing is goes to the quantity field, automatically pulls up that numeric keypad so I can indicate what I'm receiving in. It displays for me the quantities that are on that purchase order, gives me the item description. If you have a bin set up in your uh, item maintenance, it will display that for you as well. And it's showing me the unit of measure. Now, if there are multiple units of measure set up for this item, if I, for example, receive in by the case quantity but sell in stock by eaches, it would default to whatever's on the PO and then allow me to change that unit of measure and convert that quantity based on what's set up in Sage. Really quickly to mention this too, I mentioned a bin location with standard Sage. Uh, it's just going to show you the uh, bin that you have set up. 
We also have a multi-bin solution that allows you to have multiple locations set up within a warehouse that we can do a lot of things like directing you to particular bins through bin allocations, um, real-time live transfers, um, a pick, pack, and ship that we'll talk about in a little bit. But there are the options out there to go ahead and have the multi-bin with our software too. So we validated the item. Now we need to indicate our quantity. If I go to key this in and accidentally hit an extra zero, for example, we're going to also validate that for you. And the options are have it set like my demo is, where it just prevents you from over-receiving. Or you can have it set to simply warn the user that they're trying to over-receive, and then they can continue on. Now, key in the appropriate quantity. On the next screen, this is integrated with our labeling software, where after every single item, you can go ahead and print off a label if you want. You can also have this set where it prints labels for some items and it won't for others. And what it's doing there is it would look back to Sage item maintenance under the additional tab where you indicate whether or not you want to print receipt labels. That comes into play a lot because some of our customers have some items come in with barcodes, others don't. There's no reason to print off barcodes for items that are already barcoded. But if you do need to print them, you tap print, connects up to the server, and prints out to a network thermal printer or even a belt printer. So as you go on, scan your items, enter your quantity, Print your labels if need be, and continue as you go. If I do this item lookup, you'll see the items that I've already received in drop off of this, showing me only what's left to receive in. Now, if I go to send my data back and I haven't completely received in a purchase order, we're going to warn you of that as well. To send data back, you tap the arrow at the top. It gives me an overview screen where if I'm paying attention, I can see I have a line that I've forgotten, and I can dive into that if I want. However, we found most people hit that arrow button and then quickly hit the send data button. So, in that instance, we give you that warning that there are unresolved lines. If it's an item that just simply didn't arrive, you can hit send and standard Sage back ordering would kick in. However, if you were in a rush, you actually did receive the item in and simply forgot to indicate it on the scanner, this gives the user one last chance to now review this, see the item in question. If it was, in fact, an item you received in, you can highlight it right there, hit accept, and receive it in. So that just shows how we validate the items to make sure they're accurate, the quantities, and we also make sure you don't miss anything. Now when you send this over, it's completely received in purchase order. Our unintended import is going to grab that. <coughs> Excuse me. And import right back into Sage. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> so I'm going to pull up my receipt of goods and show you how this imported in. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you have auto posting turned on, that will automatically update. Otherwise, it will go right in here to data entry. All right, so that's the receiving process. And before I go into shipping, I'm going to show you really quickly just a couple of things on the inventory side. I'm going to exit back out of receiving and go into inventory transactions. <clears throat> the first one here is physical count. So if you're doing an inventory count with the scanners, simply launch the transaction, indicate your warehouse code. If you have multiple warehouses set up in Sage, they all show up here. <coughs> and all you have to do is simply scan your item, indicate the quantity. You can continue to count items, and when you're done, send your data back. It connects up, and instead of having to sit back there at a PC and key that in, that data that we just counted shows back up in physical count entry. So I'll grab my warehouse code, and here's what we counted. Now you still print off your variance report to make sure you don't have any discrepancies, but the count takes a fraction of the time by scanning it, tapping a button, and boom, it imports back to Sage. Now, with ScanForce, you also can do transactions such as inventory transfers, moving from one location to another, whether that's with multi-bin, from bin to bin, or from a warehouse code to another warehouse. <clears throat> you can do inventory issues, and that's where job costs would tie in as you, if you have that as well, or inventory receipts, just directly receiving items into inventory. Now, let's get into the actual shipping side of this. So, we have a sales order in Sage. Now, we need to pick this order. Under order processing, you'll see ScanForce has the option to do a pick and then a pack or checking. 
That would allow you to go ahead and stage an order over time without having to worry about creating the invoice. Multiple people can pick that order. I can pick part of it, and then Matt can come pick the rest of it, and Patty can come pick after him, and you'll see what everyone else has done. Then you can go through and do a checking and packing where you can break it down by uh, boxes or packages. That is data that we also use <clears throat> to show you our dashboards here, which allows us to show performance reports and a snapshot of what's happening in that warehouse, such as orders that are ready to pick, then orders that are being picked, ready to pack, and then shipped, and a quick snapshot of what's happening. The layout that I was just in a minute ago is that performance layout. We're also in our dashboard. You can track per user what's happening. Here are the uh, shippers I have out there. Tells you how many orders per user. And then it gives you additional detail where you can see these two have picked the same number of orders. When you look at what's actually happening here, this person has picked quite a few more lines than this person. So this just is a little snapshot of what we have within our dashboards here as well. Now, for the sake of the demo today, I wanted to show you guys just how you can uh, pick an order and separate it by the packages so then Starship can pick that up from there. So let's go into the uh, sales order shipping. Just like on the purchase order side of things, it wants to know what order you're dealing with. In this instance, we need to indicate a sales order number. So you could go ahead and do a lookup, key it in, or if you print off a barcode or picking sheet, you can use that as well. I'm going to go ahead and scan a barcode for that. It's going to connect up and real-time grab that data from Sage. So if two seconds before someone made a change to that order, I'm getting real-time exactly what is on that order. Now, we also have a directed pick, so you can go paperless if you want to. This is going to go ahead and show me the items and the quantities and locations I need to go get. And it displays them in bin order. <clears throat> if we were to look at this order back in Sage, this uh, line item here for these Hatchimals is the first line item then the Shopkins, and then the baby doll, but it prints it out here or displays it at least in the order of bin locations so that I don't have to walk all the way through my warehouse from one place to the next. I walk through it one time and I don't have to backtrack. Now it defaults to package one and I can go ahead and grab my first item there. It's gonna validate it. Oops, I hit the enter button again. <clears throat> Forces you once again to go ahead and enter your quantity and shows you the information that's actually for this item on this particular order here. So I've validated the correct item. Now I go ahead and enter in my quantity. And then I continue on. That drops off of that lookup and I continue on to go ahead and pick. Now, let's say in package one I have a little bit of additional room there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the next item. <clears throat> let's say out of the 900 there, I can fit 200 into that package one still. I will now move my package up to package two by tapping on that plus button. And now I'll scan the rest of that item in. And you can see how it keeps track of what you've already done. I had already picked the 200 for this item, and now I have the remaining balance there of 700. Then I'll go on to package three, grab my last item. But let's say in package three, only 700 of these fit in, so we'll pack 700. Go to package four and complete our shipping process. So this order is complete. You can see I have no other items left here to go ahead and pick. And the data that we've now captured on the scanner, validated on the scanner, whether you use the pick, pack, and ship or the one-step process that I just showed you here, you have all of your information instantly validated. With a tap of a button, we're going to import that back over to Sage, and that's where Matt's going to pick it up now to complete that shipping process. Okay, thanks, Steve. And actually what I'm going to do is, let me share my screen here and give Patty control so she can actually show you the credit card processing on the sales order. So we're just going to rewind a little bit and let me make this full screen. Okay, Patty, so you should be able to control my screen now. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Steve and Matt. Um, so American Payment Solutions basically uh, has a seamless integration with Sage 100, allowing you to process pre-authorizations as well as capture the funds right within your sales order screen. Needless to say, the accuracy in which you've already brought in the information due to ScanForce it quickens the process for you 
on the uh, beginning side of things and then I can help you or American Payment Solutions can help you as far as the payment side of things. Um, you'll be able to also see how the shipping automation will, will not only help you to save time but it will eliminate the, the room for error, any room for errors or most of the room for errors. Uh, the automation will allow you to allocate resources to other activities and that's from, from the scan force beginning stage all the way down to Starship delivering the products for you or, or getting the carriers shipping fees and whatnot in order to deliver the products for you. So that's actually how we're helping the big guy. Um, among other information that I'll share with you towards the end of the presentation that has to do with exclusive promotions to all of you that attended this webinar. So please, when I speak about the promotions, make sure you write down a code that I'm going to give you because it will be necessary in order to take advantage of the promotion. So the transaction has been processed and let's just assume that we're ready to ship it. You can pre-authorize the transaction. Um, with Starship I know that you have a way to automate the process as far as getting rate quotes so that can also function as far as pre-authorizing the transaction because if for any reason you have to make changes during the time of capture, you can make those changes and we will capture the funds accordingly. Right now what you see on the screen is the credit card information that is defaulted directly from Sage Customer Maintenance. A pre-authorization can last anywhere between 7 and 30 days with the American Payment Solutions integration. Other processors will limit you to a 7-day pre-authorization period and then you have to re-preauthorize the transaction and we all know how that can become um, very cumbersome and confusing for any of the end users involved. So my credit card in particular that I'm using right now does not have $10,000. I'm going to go ahead and just remove some of the items from here so that I can process the pre-authorization. So let me just get this out of the way. And what I'm doing right now, standard SAGE process, you, you can see it's um, the standard cancellation of items and then SAGE in your case or in this demo case is requesting a cancellation reason. And then let me just change this to $100. Actually one. Okay. Here we go. So now I can go ahead and pre-authorize. You can change the transaction type to default to either payment pre-post authorization or deposit sale. One of the benefits that we offer is for you to receive next day funding, which is literally 12 hour funding. If you batch out by 9 p.m. Eastern, you will have the funds available in your bank account the next morning by 9 a.m. You can process individually or process in batch, standard stage functionality. And once you do decide to process, all you have to do is click on submit card the APS window will come up with the default credit card information. You can either make validation code a required field or completely switch it off and bypass this field entirely. In my case, I do have to key in the validation code. Notice how we will be referencing your SAGE sales order number as well as default the amount of the transaction. Once I click on submit, the transaction is actually going through our gateway we will verify the information you provided is correct. Now as part of your setup, you can decide whether to stop the user in his tracks, his or her tracks, if there is a mistake in any of the areas that we check, or if you would like them to continue, even if there are errors in the address or CDV code. If you decide they can continue, the transaction will be pre-authorized, and you will notice you have now a transaction ID the transaction ID is coming directly from our portal and I'm going to go ahead and just briefly show you the portal before I hand it back over to Matt. This is the APS portal. As you can see, you can process transactions directly from the portal as well. The only setback is you would have to key them into Sage later. We have a very robust reporting capability. We make it almost impossible for you not to be able to find a transaction. And let me just log in here really quick. or re-log in, I should say. And this demo is available to anyone. If ever you would like a test system, we set it up at absolutely no charge to you. 
So now that we're at the at the uh, portal again, the reports you can see there is an immense amount of sorting criteria, and the transaction ID that I mentioned in Sage 100. Let me just go back to the report here. Let's take a look at it in the portal. What you'll notice is that the transaction will show up as a pending transaction. This is it found here. It'll show the customer information. The email address is also coming directly from Sage Setup, where this email address will be receiving a, actually, let me go to the last one here. This email address will be receiving an email with a receipt notifying them that the transaction has been completed. The transaction ID that I showed you on the sales order, which is this one, in the 623, will follow the transaction for the life of the transaction in Sage. And if you click on the transaction ID, notice how we will include the information from Sage right in our portal. So you don't have to go back and forth if you don't want to, but it is an excellent means of cross-referencing. We are referencing the sales order number as well as the customer information and the items being sold. So now that the transaction is pre-authorized, I'm going to go ahead and turn this back over to you, Matt, so you can continue with your side of the presentation. Okay, thank you, Patty. Um, so let me just get back. So again, as Patty mentioned, um, one standard feature with Starship is you do gain the ability to, as you can see here, we add a rate quote button in sales order entry. Um, so um, your shipper, uh, your order, customer service, sales reps at time of order. Matt. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Matt. Um, we don't have the screen sharing. If you oh. wouldn't mind clicking on. Oh, okay. There we go. Now, now we can see your screen. That helps. Thank you, Patty. Um, so, as I was just mentioning, we add this little rate quote button down below. Um, so again, at time of order, my sales reps, customer service reps, they can click the rate quote button and actually see a list contract rates right from the carriers that I have modules with. Okay, and that also has an applied column. And with Starship, uh, applied is plus or minus any freight rules. Inside Starship, you can most certainly set up freight rules. And when I ship the uh, package that or order Steve just set up, I'll show you those freight rules and how you can use them. I'm just going to close the sales order. Okay. I'm going to open up Starship. It's a little bit bigger. So with Starship, we actually have designed, developed two different interfaces that you can work with Sage. We have a Starship link where you can actually go into shipping data entry inside of Sage. Um, I can define what's being shipped. Or the nice thing with using ScanForce, it's automatically going to make that entry um, based off what I use the scanner and how I scan and package my items with that handheld scanner. So with Link, my shipper would have to go into shipping data entry to basically just click a Starship button. Um, we also have a business object interface, or BOI, and that's what I'm going to be showing you today. The nice thing with BOI is I can do all my shipping right from Starship. Okay, So I don't technically need access to Sage. Um, as I mentioned, with ScanForce, it is creating that entry in shipping data entry. So standard Sage feature is that Sage is assigning it to assigning it an invoice. So as you can see here, my document type I have selected invoice. Uh, with BOI, I can pull by sales order or by customer number. Um, in this case, with the integration with ScanForce, I would again have to do invoice because if I try to put in a sales order number, it's going to tell me that that order has been completely shipped. Now, we do have an enhancement. I mean, I can most certainly, if my invoice numbers, you know, if I printed, reprinted a packing list after I used the scanner to make kind of a waste, um, you know, I could scan an invoice number if it was barcoded. As you can see here, we have a lookup that I can look up by invoice or sales or number and manually scan them or select them. Uh, but we also have an enhancement that will allow me to actually put in the sales order number and what Starship will automatically do with this enhancement and re is relate it to that invoice number. Okay. And of course, you know, most packing lists are going to have that sales order number on it. Uh, using ScanFor, it's probably going to be barcoded. So you can just hook up a regular wedge type scanner on your shipping station and scan that um, source document. And as you can see here, Starship's automatically going to pull in all the order information. And that's order header as well as line item detail. 
Starship, we basically map fields from Sage. Um, and these map fields can have a one-to-many relationship. So as you can see here, for example, just based off the ship via, my carrier service and billing type has automatically been selected for my shipper. All right. This order here was actually just UPS ground was my ship via. Um, nice thing with Starship, you can also default international services to each of your ship vias. So here this is an international order. Uh, so I just have set up, hey, if it's UPS ground, but if it's international, automatically select UPS standard to Canada. Uh, most certainly I can click on this drop down and make a change. You know, I can change carrier and or service just because it's automatically selected. Doesn't mean it's locked in place. Right. Sender, that's just the company the order's coming from inside of Sage. And recipient, of course, is the ship too. Okay, we do support multiple companies as well as locations and or warehouses. But really bring your attention down in the packaging view. And I'm just going to expand all my items here. So again, however I scanned this order with ScanForce, that's how Starship's going to pull this order in. Okay. Um, also with Starship, I can click on the box level. You can create custom packages. Uh, so maybe I know this goes into a large box. You know, maybe this order goes into a medium box. Nice thing with using custom packages, as you can see here, it's going to automatically populate the dimensions for my shipper. Bill weight, we integrate with most scales. So you can hook it up and Starship can automatically grab the weight from the scale. Or in my case here, I'm actually using inventory database. So if I click on a line item, as you can see here, I have my weights right here. Um, my system's set up, I'm pulling that from stage. But what Starship will start doing as you ship and processing, it will start storing all your inventory items in its own database. Uh, so nice thing with that, maybe you don't have the weights inside a stage. You know, NMFC codes or international data, not a standard field inside stage for that information. So you can actually store that right with inside a stage. Okay? Because this is international, I'll click on this little icon. Here's where I can store all the required international information. Country of manufacturer, harmonize or schedule B codes. We have our own lookup for that. You can look up by code or by description. Okay? If you're doing EEI classification, certificate of origin. Again, all that's stored right with Inside Starship. Now, most certainly, if you guys have user-defined fields set up inside Sage, maybe you're storing the Schedule B code, we can change the mappings and actually pull data from user-defined fields. Okay. So again, I'm scanning my source document. It's going to come in however I defined it on that scanner. Uh, maybe next step is to, I want my shipper to rate shop. Okay. So they can click the green dollar icon. They can also click the rate shop tab. Right. And then from here, same thing, you're going to be able to see um, all the carriers that I have modules with, all the different service types and rates. Um, I just have a scenario here, so it's just limiting this to UPS. Um, so, but if I had UPS, if I want to see FedEx, you know, we have LTL carrier modules. Again, I'm going to be able to see the carrier service, delivery days, I can do by business day, total day, you know, delivery date, list, list or contract. And with Starship, you can also do carrier rules. So um, I could set up a rule. We have some clients that will do a ship via just called Best Way. And what they do is simply create a rule that says, hey, Starship, automatically select the carrier and service that is the least expensive and or maybe the least amount of delivery days. And then Starship kind of just runs this behind the scenes and will automatically select the carrier. Okay. Charges tab, just a simple breakdown of the charges. I can see the entire shipment. Um, on the charges tab, again, I can see the breakdown. I can also see, you know, if I have freight rules set up. Um, so here I do have a freight rule. Um, I'm actually using a user-defined field as the trigger. So I have one on customer maintenance. It's just called freight discount. It's a checkbox. So because it's selected, this customer is receiving a 10% discount on freight. Okay? Freight rules can be min maxes, flat rate percentages. Um, and again, you can use user-defined fields. Uh, we can go all the way down to line item detail to trigger these rules. You know, so maybe if you have an oversized item, you can create a rule that says, hey, anytime item one, two, three is on an order, automatically add twenty dollars because it's an oversized item. Okay. And then when I'm ready to ship, I can simply click the ship and process button or the F5 key, which is the shortcut key. 
Uh, with Starship, you can also save orders, kind of Steve mentioned before, if maybe if you were staging an order, you can start the process, save it, and come back and finish it later. Right? As soon as I click Ship and Process, I will get my shipping documents. Um, this is what we call our smart label. I just use it for the sake of the demo so you can see a label. Uh, but as you can see, the smart label prints the shipping label as well as the packaging list together on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. So this would go to a laser printer. Most certainly you can send your shipping labels to a thermal printer. And with Starship, you also have the option of sending your packaging list to a thermal printer as well. So maybe you want to save some paper, use those free labels you get from your carrier, and you can most certainly do that. All right, so box one, box two, three, and four. All right, because this is international, I'm going to populate my commercial invoice. All right, so Starship with the documents, you know, we do international documents uh, for LTL shipments, bill of lading forms. But on all the forms, we're going to do order header, line item detail by default. And you can also customize each form, you know, maybe add the signature, the date field. One less thing your shipper has to worry about when this prints out. Um, with each form, you can create templates. Um, on each template, you can also assign sending, or I should say printing rules. Uh, so maybe customer, you know, say ABC needs the commercial invoice to look a certain way. You can create a template for that customer and then assign a rule so, you know, that template will only print when the order is for customer ABC. Okay. And here's just an example of the NAFTA form. Again, down below, I can customize it really set this up so when it prints out, it's ready to go. So ship and process, I get my shipping documents. And for my shipper, it's kind of rinse, repeat cycle now. I'm ready to move on to my next order. And for the front office, I'll just jump back into Sage. I'll go into invoice data entry. So here's the invoice. Oops. Let's get my message that the pre-auth has been processed. Header tab, tracking button. Here's my package breakdown. Tracking numbers, weight, freight. Okay. This is in Sage's tracking table, so I can use their button to track. I can also use their item to box detail. You know, and this flows through into history. So I can go through customer maintenance or invoice history lookup, and I will gain access to this information at any time. And of course, on the totals tab, we write back the freight amount. Uh, with freight amount, you can also set up write back rules. So if there's some scenarios where you do not want freight to be written back, most certainly can create a rule for that. Um, nowadays, a lot of orders come from websites. So you can simply just say, hey, if it's a web order, or there's actually, if there's a value in here, do not overwrite the freight amount. I'll quickly show you some other programs that come with Starship. Uh, first one is our e-notification program, and again, this is included. It doesn't require any additional seats or licenses. It can be installed in as many workstations as you like. But as you can see with e-notify, I can design my own custom template. You know, nice thing with these, put my company logo, build my brand awareness, but let my customer know how your shipment's on its way. I can add page fields, so PO number, sales order number, let them know how it was shipped, where it's going to, let them know, hey, four packages. Estimated delivery dates coming from the carrier, so it is accurate. And of course, all that item to box detail with hyperlink tracking numbers. So these can help reduce those inbound calls of customers just calling up looking for their shipment or their order. Um, on these emails, you can create unlimited templates. So maybe you want to do a coupon code. You, know, you can hyperlink the coupon code, get them right back to your website. And then on each template, instead of printing rules, you can actually do sending rules. So, you know, if I only wanted this coupon code template to go to certain customers, I can most certainly create a rule for that, and it would only go to those customers. Email addresses we can pull from Sage. So, you know, sales order header, customer maintenance, I can pull in sales reps. I can use user-defined fields. So if I needed to send an email to six different email addresses, I could simply just have a user-defined field in Sage with all those listed. All right. And these can go as soon as the order is shipped. I can delay them by a certain number of hours and or minutes. I can send them all at the end of the day in one big batch. You know, I can at 7 o'clock send them all. Or as you can see from the viewer, I can forward, delete, and send right from here. Okay. And with these, you can still most certainly use your carrier-generated ones. And Starship can be automatically set up to select, in this case, Quantum View. On additional settings, same thing. We can pull in email addresses. But maybe just use the carrier-generated for exceptions. That way the customer will get yours that says, hey, it's on its way. 
and they'll get one from the carrier if there was a delay. Again, just another way to help reduce those inbound calls. You know, I have customers that do sales reps here, and that way they can be proactive, call the customer and let the customer know, oh, just heard from UPS, you know, your order's not going to be delivered on Friday, expect it Tuesday. Okay. And we also have a dashboard. Um, again, many, this can be installed as many machines as you like. doesn't require any additional seats or licenses. Um, so here I just have some performance indicators. You know, I can see shipment by carrier, shipment by status. You know, I see what's processed, delivered, um, top chart of five customers, and shipment by user. So with Starship each of your shippers can have their own login credentials. You can also assign your own rules or security features for each user. And so as you can see here, I can see you know, who shipped what, and I can drill down into these, get further information, record detail. If I had to track a package, this is the information I would gain access to if I did it from dashboard. So shipping day, estimated delivery status, as you can see, all that information. So dashboard gives my front office management you know, instant access to shipping information can reports, we have a late delivery report that's going to compare guaranteed delivery date to estimate or actual. So it's going to let you know of any package that wasn't delivered on time so you can get a refund. And then we have charge comparison reports. Uh, these are nice. We have an applied versus contract. So you can run this and it's actually going to show you all your shipments, show you your applied, so what you charge the customer for the shipment, and then compare it to the contract rate, which is what the carrier is going to charge you. And then in the third column is the plus or minus. So it's just a nice way, kind of a P&L, make sure you're breaking even on all your shipments. Okay. So with that, I'm actually, I'll hand this back over to Patty. I'll give her control so she can finish the process. Oh, looks like she has control. Thank you, Matt. And before we finish the process, I just want to mention additional benefits that you would receive with the integration into Sage 100. Uh, with credit card processing, there is a program in place uh, from Visa and MasterCard called Level 3 Processing. Level 3 Processing requires 13 to 16 fields in order to qualify a transaction for the very lowest rates in the industry coming from Visa and MasterCard. We have actually taken those fields from Sage and automated the process to the, to the point where, as an end user, you continue to process your transactions as usual, but we take those fields, send them to Visa and MasterCard, therefore guaranteeing the very lowest rates for you. And I'll give you an example. If currently your rates are 2.65, we can bring the rates down through level three processing as low as 0.05%. So just so you get an idea, we have seen a level of savings anywhere between $4,000 a month to $112,000 a year. So get an idea of maybe that money that's sitting on the table right now, and it's, it's as simple as switching over to American Payment Solutions and allowing us to process your transactions through Level 3 Processing. Part of the qualifications for Level 3 Processing have to do with the fact that the transactions have to be from a business to business, business to government, transaction uh, anywhere within the continental U.S. And that's only one of the biggest benefits that we offer among many others. We do not charge a credit card module fee. We do not charge for installation, implementation, training, maintenance, or support. We do provide support 24-7, 365 days a year. And we purposely do not have an automated system because we want you to speak to a live human being anytime you contact our support staff. So with that said, the reason that I, I wanted to put all of that information out there for you is because really what I have to do after this point, now that the items have been, are, are ready to ship and we're ready to invoice, is basically standard Sage functionality. All I have to do is update my sales order invoices and as soon as my update is complete here, um, which I, I probably won't have to update. Let's see. Yeah, this would normally. What did I miss here? No, it's okay, Patty. This would normally be filled out. Um, we had to use a, a separate sales order number uh, just because I already had it ready to go in, in the shipment and shipping data entry. So that's why this order is just a little oh. bit different. But we just wanted to make sure everyone could see how you know Patty works. So she used actually sales order five thousand and one. 
So this is kind of a different invoice. So now Thank you, you Matt, and I apologize. I, I, and of course, I had to use it because the limit on my credit card is not as high as yours. I yeah. thought you had that ninety-five thousand yeah. dollar charge. Yeah, I apologize. So, I forgot that you had that limit. So. <laughs> no, no worries. I just want to make sure that everybody is aware of the fact that the integration is very seamless, and and really, I'm not doing anything out of the ordinary. I'm simply following your Sage process. After, of course. Scanforce and Starship have automated the entire process for me from the beginning all the way down to shipping the items. Um, as the update is going through, I, I would just like to mention if anybody is interested in learning more about the level of savings that you may qualify for, all we need from you are your most recent merchant statements, hopefully three months worth, and we will provide you with a free analysis of your current rates and fees, no strings attached. And for those of you that decide to switch to American Payment Solutions, I would like you to know that based on the volume of your account, we will offer to pay up to 100% of your Starship or Scanforce solution. Now, it solely depends on the volume of your account. Needless to say, if it's a $1,000 a month account, it will be almost impossible for us to pay for both of these solutions. But depending on the volume, we will let you know exactly what percentage we'll be able to pay. Now that the transaction is complete, um, I'd like to just walk back over to the portal and show you how the portal has also been updated at the same time that I updated Sage 100. And I think I can, yeah, I can get back over there. Let me just log back in. And remember, everyone, the analysis is absolutely free. We would like to help you learn more about understanding your existing credit card statements, as well as finding out exactly how much money you can save. And the one thing I tell all of our merchants is credit card processors are like your insurance company. If you don't keep an eye on us at least once a year, you're really missing out on, on savings. With American Payment Solutions, we guarantee our rates in writing. So we make sure that the rates never creep up on you. And we also offer to go through your statements if you need on a monthly or yearly basis and analyze and find out if there are any additional savings for you. So the transaction I just completed, you can see has been updated in our portal. It doesn't say pending capture anymore. It will state that it has been approved. And the transaction ID remains the same. What you will also notice different is it is now referencing an invoice number versus a sales order number. If you click on the transaction ID, you will be able to continue seeing the details that we pulled directly from Sage. And these are the, I, these are the, this is actually the information that we compile for Visa and MasterCard in order to qualify transactions for level three processing. Please understand, many processors will say, they process through level three. The question you have to ask is, do I have to key any of the fields in manually? And the answer from other processors will be yes. The difference is with American Payment Solutions, we have completely automated level three processing for you. Um, and with that, um, should I send it back to you, Steve or Matt? Did you have anything else to cover? I do have a question and then we could uh, maybe post a couple of polls. Um, I'm all set on my end. Yeah, I'm all set on mine. Once we ship that order, that was it. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Just a quick recap once again, folks. We start the day with Scanforce. We automate the entire process from not just the receiving end, but it's, as Steve mentioned, he has the work order solution, the multi-bin solution, helps you keep track of your inventory, receive your inventory, and distribute it, of course, and then set it up for delivery and hand it over to Starship. We shop the rates for you. As you can see, the presentation that Matt provided is very detailed as far as the information that you will now have available regarding exactly where the package is. You'll be able to provide excellent customer service, which is, of course, what your customers expect from you. We almost eliminate the room for error from the beginning to end. And then with American Payment Solutions, of course, automating the receipt of payments, which is 
important. I mean, I know a lot of people say, we don't like to accept credit cards. Understandably enough, no one likes to pay the extra rate. But it's a necessary evil. Eventually, you will have to accept them because your customers will request it. And if you do have to accept them, why not get the better rate? So with that, um, there is a question that someone has posted, and it has to do with um, Sage 100C. Steve, Matt, they wanted to know if the functionality would be the same through Sage 100C. Yeah, on our end, that, that wouldn't impact the functionality of our solution. Um, so on our end with cloud solution, we are currently not compatible. We are working on becoming compatible. So it should be very shortly. Um, we will be compatible with cloud solutions. Excellent. And as far as American Payment Solutions, we are compatible not just with Sage 100, but also with 300, 500, Acumatica, SAP D1, and QuickBooks. And for those resellers that are on the line, please know that no matter which ERP your customers are working on or, or merge to or switch to, you continue to be the reseller of record and we continue to provide you with a residual share. Um, there are a couple of polls right now that I'd like to present to the group. If, if you would be kind enough to answer, we'd like to get an idea of uh, how you felt about the presentation and who might be interested in more information. So are you interested in learning more about any of the following? Please check all that apply. Scanforce for warehouse management automation, American Payment Solutions for credit card processing or getting you a lower rate, Starship for shipping software automation. I'm going to give everybody a few seconds if you would please reply. Okay, we're getting close here and I see that 40% have voted. A couple more seconds give you a chance to respond if you would please. And keep in mind the promotion that's going on. I'm going to show a code at the end of our presentation. So please drop everything. Make sure you get the code. If anybody is interested in purchasing the Scanforce solution or Starship solution, please let American Payment Solutions help you with purchasing both or one of these enhancements. Okay, and I see that 54% have voted. And let's see if I can get the other poll here. I'm going to go ahead and close it and switch over so that I can show you now the promotional code as well as our contact information. So you can see on the screen Steve's contact information here far upper left, um, Matt's information far upper right, and then my contact information for American Payment Solutions is centered. Below my contact information is the promotional code. Please take note of it if you're interested in purchasing either Scanforce or Starship. It is APS Star Scan 16. This promotion will expire on December 31st, 2016. So if you are interested in learning more about the level of savings you qualify for, please be sure to send me your most recent merchant statement. If you're processing through American Express, please include American Express. And with that, I would like to conclude our presentation. Matt, Steve, did you have any closing comments? I'm uh, just looking. I think there's a question uh, regarding download of the presentation. Um, we are recording this, so we will send a link to the recording as soon as it's available. Excellent catch, Matt, and definitely we'll be sending a recording. If anyone is interested in a one-on-one -on -one presentation, by all means, let us know and we will be more than happy to provide it for you. Yeah, most Steve, certainly. Any, anything else? No, that's exactly what I was going to say. And Just thanks, everybody, for uh, taking time to look at this today, and Patty and, and Matt as well. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thanks. We really appreciate it. Thanks again, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and a, a fabulous holiday season. We look forward to hearing back from all of you soon. And please give us ideas as far as what you would like us to cover in future webinars. Happy holidays, everyone. Take care.